Hey, greetings, my family. Greetings to you all. I hope that you're doing okay. And I also hope that after listening to this video to the end, you will still be okay. But you will take something from this story. And my God, be prepared. It is not a good one. So, I recently did a video titled Understanding Psychological Abuse. I also explained some of the signs of psychological abuse and some of the different forms. Some of the warning signs I mentioned, one of which states, that you'll find partners making excuses for their partners and covering up for them. In other words, they know that their partner is doing something wrong. They are afraid to speak out. So what they do instead, they lie and make out that it is not true. Now, I was searching for a story I heard on another content creator platform and I wanted to share it with you. But instead of finding that story, I came across this one and I really have to share it with you. Now, if you are a parent, a mother, I warned all the time, be very careful. If you are a father, it is the same. Sometimes you can meet some people. They are the devil from where devil comes from. And in this case, this one is just pure evil. A lot of people think that because you met someone in church or because someone is classified as a Christian, they are pure in heart. Oh no, they're not. And this story will confirm what I'm saying. So I found this story on medium.com online. Well, obviously, .com online. <laughs> but I came across this story on medium.com, yes? And it is titled, How a 10-Year-Old Lost Her Life to an Evil Stepmother. Welcome to my channel, Abuse Insights, where I create contents on abuse topics to include but not limited to childhood or domestic abuse. The child named was only 10 years old when she died, one of the most painful death. However, she was failed by many. I will leave a description I will leave the link to the story so you can actually go and find it yourself. So the child mother was a drug addict. She was born in April 2003 in Atlanta, Georgia. But unfortunately, her mother was a drug addict and the only way her daughter could be safe it was to be with her father who had gotten full custody of her so the child's father met a woman in church he met her during a church service and thought she was a beauty on the outside as always you cannot judge a book by its cover because her heart was filled with evil. The two quickly became inseparable and after two years of dating, they decided to tie the knot and so they did. The following year, the couple was blessed with a bouncing baby boy. However, it wasn't long after the wife's true colors started showing. But her husband turned a blind eye. Nevertheless, one day, 
he was shocked to receive a call from the, the local police station asking him to come down. He headed there and to his surprise, it wasn't about him, it was about his daughter. The officer told him that her, his daughter school had gotten them involved after noticing several bruises all over her body and other signs of abuse. Even though the father could see his daughter was being abused, he did nothing to prevent it and neither did he have any comment at the time. However, his wife was taken to the police station and was charged with first degree child cruelty. Though she pleaded guilty, she was only given a five year probation period and stripped of her teaching license as part of Georgia's first offended program. On top of that, the couple was also given mandatory parenting classes, which some weren't sure if they attended since things got worse at home. The child, after a visit to her grandmother's place, and for some time, the little girl was happy. She excelled at school, gained weight, and had some peace. However, as soon as the parental classes ended, her dad took her back to the family home. Her grandmother fought for custody, but lost. She couldn't persuade the officers that her grandchild was being abused, even though it was present and apparent. As a result, in the fall of 2010, the child was placed back into her father's care. According to the grandmother, her granddaughter became grumpy. The stepmother would scold her for anything and began starving her. The, the sad part was that none of the social services or law enforcement agencies checked up on her and the little girl started to fear constantly watching her back until her painful demise. It gets worse. To try and isolate her from everyone, the family, her dad and stepmother, relocated multiple times between 2011 and 2013. They denied her to play with other kids and told her she was not allowed to go and visit her grandmother. Her life became a bubble. The stepmother then gave birth to her second child. And since she was now a full-time stay-at-home mom, the little girl never got a break and decided to run away. She was only nine years old at the time. She told one of the officers that she was tired of everything and that her stepmother had tied her with a belt and placed her under a cold shower. However, after a police inquiry, her father said she was making it all up. Isn't this sad? And without proof, without evidence, no charges were made and the child was placed back into her father's care. Hmm. Oh Lord. It wasn't long until she was found by another officer sleeping in the bushes of a nearby complex. Hence, a child abuse case was filed. The stepmother and the child's father got away with it again. To make matters worse, none of the GDFCS, which stands for Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services, followed up on the case. So this case happened in America. In May of 2013, the couple took their kids to visit the father, sister, and their mother 
for Valentine's Day. The grandmother was concerned by her grandchild's appearance. Her hair had badly cut. She looked timid, hardly smiles, and extremely thin. Troubled. So the grandmother approached the stepmother about it. After being confronted, the stepmother responded to the child's grandmother the following. Quote and unquote. If you look ugly, you should act ugly. Unfortunately, that was the last time the grandmother saw her grandchild. Red flags. There are many. There are many red flags that officers and social services chose to ignore. The child's father did nothing to protect her. Nothing. Instead, he sighed with his wife. Some think he shouldn't be blamed since he had two jobs and was hardly home. The dad later told the jury that he was shocked by how much his daughter ate when he was around but was never concerned by her ridiculous weight loss. In his defense, he thought his daughter metabolism was too high and there was nothing he could do about it. The reason the child was eating so much in his dad's present is because when dad is not home, the stepmother would refuse to give the child anything to eat. Continuing, the father said that his wife constantly complained about his daughter misbehaving. He chose to take her word for it and didn't have a reason not to trust her. After all, it was the love of his life and the mother of his children. I pause from the story right here. This is where many of us get it wrong. You don't just take an adult word over a child. Because oftentimes the child is being blamed. Oftentimes because the adult know that he or she will get away with what they are saying, the child is then left neglected. And let this case be a lesson to some of you who does this. Listen to your children. Take your children, take your child away from the situation, from the environment. Sit them down and allow them to speak. They are no fool. They know what they are saying and they have no reason to lie. In most cases, stop putting your partner, your girlfriend, your boyfriend over your children because this is what happened when you do. Now let's move into the rest of the story and we are now on the topic of murder. Why murder? I'll let you know. In the summer of 2013 the family relocated so the stepmother and the child's father relocated to another state they completely vanished from the face of the earth she hardly saw extended family we referring to the child again and neighbors later testified that though they had seen the child biological children Though they had seen the stepmother, biological children playing outside, they never saw the child who lost her life. To their knowledge, the couple had only two children. It is believed that the child was forced to stay in her room without water and food. Her stepmother baked fresh cookies for her two kids and forced her to to smell through her bedroom door or stare at the pictures. On top of that, she was not allowed to go to the toilet but do everything in her bed. How sad. But it wasn't long after her anger turned into seizures. October 24th, 2013. 
The stepmother messaged the child's father to let him know his daughter was not okay. But instead of him rushing home as a caring father would do, the dad words to his wife, he would come back later after finishing his first shift. That evening when he returned home, he found his daughter in the bathtub shaking with her eyes rolled back. At this point you want to ask, how heartless is this man? According to him, though he wanted to do something, he saw that she was beyond repair. Really? Old people have a saying, what is not dead, don't throw it away. The child, she looked beyond repair, but she was not dead. He could have taken the child to hospital, but he did not. However, he thought of calling the emergency services, but his wife talked him out of it, saying, You can't do it. Are you kidding me? They will think I do something to her. Remember, I am on probation. Yeah. Scared to lose his wife? Here goes the father. He chose his wife over the well-being of his daughter. How pathetic. Then he wrapped his daughter in a blanket and placed her on the bed. Soon after, he left for work and four days later, he got a text message from his wife saying, Your daughter is dead. She is gone. Just reading this makes me so sad to think and to know that a parent a biological parent can do this to his own child because of his wife. Now you all take this till death do us part and forsake all others too seriously. You have a responsibility to take care of your children. You don't neglect them. But look how badly this man neglected his daughter. Again, Instead of him packing up and rushing home, he remained calm like nothing happened and finished his shift, then headed home. It was then that the two came up with an idea. If anyone asks of her, we will do this. Because she has run away before, so that is what we will tell them and obviously they would believe us said the wife. They decided to burn the child's dead body on Halloween. So what the father did? The father headed to Walmart, brought a big trash can, trash bag, charcoal and lighter fluid. They then rolled her with duct tape and stuffed her inside the trash bags, then into the can and put her in their car. Soon after, they woke the other two kids, then put them in the car and drove away. My God, isn't this sad? But there is a God. After they had found, found a scheduled place and had burned her for some time, they realized she wasn't burning as ashes and they what they did, they came up with a plan B. They extinguished the fire, picked up her corpse, placed it in the can, and returned to their apartment. The following day, the father drove to work with her daughter's body, her remain, in the back of his truck. This time around, he decided to use his brains and confess. The co-worker immediately told him to call the police and thought it took him until he got home around 4 a.m. He finally reached them. 
but the wife and the two kids were nowhere to be found. Trying to act smart, the husband told the police that his daughter had died from drinking poison and because he got scared and confused, he didn't know what to do and thought of cremating her. <laughs> Nevertheless, after office officials after officials looked at the corpse, they immediately knew there was more to it than what the father was saying and arrested him. Soon after, after dropping her two kids to her mother's place, the wife then turned herself in to the police. So let's move into the trial and sentencing. In exchange for a lesson sentence, the father agreed to testify against his wife. How sad. Had he stood up for his child, it would not have gotten this far and she would still be alive. What he did, he told the jury that since he was always at work and hardly home, he didn't know that his wife was beaten, starving and abusing his daughter. That's a lie. He admitted to trying to cover up his wife's murder and reported her as a runaway. He was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole. That's where you deserve to stay. On the other hand, his wife refused to be represented by any attorney and believed God was on her side. God don't like ugly. Duh. She hardly said anything though and despite one of the judges advising her to take legal help, she turned it down. A doctor, the one who performed the autopsy, came on the stand and explained in detail the kind of suffering that the child had endured. She was more or less skin and bones. Despite being a 10 year old, she only weighed around 32 pounds, which is approximately 15 kilograms. Oh my God. On April 29th, 2019, the stepmother was found guilty of murder, two accounts of felony, concealing a death and two accounts of cruelty against children. She was sentenced to death by lethal injection. One of the judges said she did not deserve less than she was given because she showed no remorse and didn't care about those her actions had hurt. There's no joy when a jury imposes a death sentence, but this one was one of the worst cases I've ever seen. The first time you look at it, it made you sick. The last time you look at it, it makes you sick, said one of the judges. The lesson in this is that ladies, men, my God, do not put women or men in front of your children. Listen to your children. When the woman decides to leave, if she decides to leave, you will have only your child. Your child that you give birth to. Your child that you took part in making. Please, my God, stop killing off our future generations because of our selfish, careless, don't care act. Please, ladies, fathers, get something from this and protect your children. It can happen in your home because some of us are, we are messed up in our own ways. We are hurt people. Some of us are carrying forward the things that we have experienced from our childhood days and we are refusing to deal with them. We do not disclose them to you. And because of that, you can be living with a demon. Be very careful who you allow around your children. I'm going to keep saying it and I will continue saying it. 
not everything that glitter is gold. My grandma always say it's an old saying. You cannot judge a book by its cover. You cannot tell a person is good because they look good on the outside. Because someone tells you your child is lying doesn't mean the child is a liar. It simple could mean that the adult knows how to manipulate you and tell you what they want you to believe, convinced you to be exact and you neglect the child. I beg you kindly, please pay attention to your children. Please listen to this video again if you have to and understand that it can happen to your child too. Be a better person. Be a better mother. Be a better father. Be a better guardian. The child may not be your own, but you might know of what the child is experiencing. Please don't turn a blind eye. The child cannot do much, but you are an adult and you can do a lot more. God will bless you for your action. Please. Don't turn a blind eye. Thank you very much for listening. Please share the video, like the video, and comment if you care to do so. I would like your thought on this one. Thank you very much again. God bless you. Thank you for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, why not do so today? And if you have listened to this video this far, please click the like button.